Ash vs. Evil Dead, Season 2, Episode 6, Thoughts. This episode is called Trapped Inside. Another episode I love, spoilers for everything Evil Dead leading up to including this episode, not for anything later in the franchise. The episode is rated TVMA, so will this video be? Let's dive right in. So, yeah. Um, again, the show delivers something that makes sense within the overall franchise, but we haven't seen before, you know. Yeah. You know, earlier episodes set up that the people of Ash's hometown think that he's a serial killer. And yeah, it's fairly logical for that to, to culminate in them, you know, yeah, forming a lynch mob. And let's see. Yeah, I appreciate the the fact that the, you know, there's there's so much American media where, you know, oh, if, you know, you just gotta put guns in the hands of the right people and everything's gonna work out, you know, they're gonna know, and here we see, no, they're actually, you know, they almost kill good people, the the mob does, because they're, you know, they're so eager to, to get out guns, they don't stop to, to listen. And the, uh, yeah, I, I, Thought they did some some good stuff with the the um, the book manifesting on Pablo's manifesting or well, whatever on on Pablo and you know the thing you know what's the salt for protection how's salt gonna protect him? no 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 it's gonna protect us from him you know and the yeah the detail that the the amulet from Brujo is, you know, interfering with the, the process. And the... Let's see... Right, I also thought it was it was really clever that, you know, at, at the very start of the episode, it is just... Oh, right, yeah, bef before the lynch mob goes to, to the house and, and surrounds it, you know, we start with the the sheriff, you know, yeah, he wants to, to shoot this this woman who's just being kind of annoying. You know, I, I really appreciate, again, there's so much American media where, you know, they really push hard that if, you know, if a woman is a certain way, you know, maybe violence is a good thing, which is, you know, horrendous. So to hear say, no, no, no the, you know, the force that's, suggesting that you should use violence against a woman who's being annoying to you, that's evil. That's, you know, a, a demon. And and I love the, the bit of, you know, yeah, the sheriff pictures it, and then Baal says, are you going to do it, or should I, you know? And then once they arrive at the house, you know, the woman is doing the thing with the, the skin, so we know, oh, right, you know, Baal is wearing her skin out very, very nicely done. And yeah, you know, Ball in her skin is good at getting the, the mob riled up. So very, yeah, very logical next step for for him. And the, the there's some pretty funny stuff with, with Chet with, you know, why are you in my sister's room? Why do you hold her picture like that? Why, you know, all this stuff, and, you know, yeah, the, for sure, yeah, it's it's confirmed verbally later, yeah, Chet was with Cheryl, and, you know, that is considered a, a betrayal to, you know, if, if you're friends with someone, you shouldn't, you know, be with their, their family. It's this, you know, ridiculous idea that sex somehow... You know, it's it's bad for women, but good for men. You know, you're you're somehow doing something bad by having sex with them. Yeah. But yeah, um, and then later, you know, Chet is you know like Ash is pouring his heart heart out. You know, he's being so nice. Is I should probably confess. You know, and he's about to confess. I slept with your sister, and then Ash is like, "That's okay, Chet. Me too." And he's like, "Okay." Yeah, that's. That's an incest joke. <laughs> because Ash is so... He's he's not... 
he's not the sharpest knife in in the bucket, you know. So, yeah, he he thinks that that Chet is about to say, you know, I love you or or something, and he's like, you don't even have to say, you know, I know, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I I thought it was it was quite clever with the this thing of you know. Um, some of them are on the on the ground floor once the guns come out even though the sun hasn't come out yet you know it's still nighttime but once the mob gets out their guns which of course was just a matter of time you know yeah um for a while it's it's, it's um Kelly and and also Linda you know but eventually Kelly goes up to to deal with you know my powerful vagina and and Linda is taking care of you know, but this thing of that that Ash goes up the stairs because he hears someone breaking in on the on the top, you know, on the first, yeah, on the upper floor, you know. So very nicely done because it is this thing of yeah, you know, you still need to have someone on the ground floor because you you gotta try to keep them from getting too, you know, yeah, and that does of course bring me to what I've been intentionally building up to this entire time. I've been very careful to avoid mentioning one specific aspect, which is of course, yes, Lacey is still in the episode. I'm kidding. Ellen Sandwise makes an epic return as, as Cheryl. Just so amazing. Like, the moment I saw her, I was like, did they actually get, you know, because, yeah, she she looks like herself, you know. Absolutely loved it. Just such an amazing performance. She is just, like, because she, she did some fairly intense Deadite stuff in the first movie, but this is on another level, you know, the, the so, yeah, really fantastic. And, and the, the... You know, just I loved the the bit at the at the start where it's like you know, Ash, what's going on? You know, she's playing innocent, and we, you know we know it's definitely a dead eye. And I love that Chet and Ash like they take a few steps back, but they're still clearly not taking enough care to put enough distance between them and and dead eye Cheryl. And the yeah, the part where she rips out, you know, if you won't go go through him to get to me, I'll go through him for you, you know, and, and rips out the heart. And the, right, um, the moment where, like, Ash and, and Cheryl, you know, siblings, you know, they're, they're, like, playing hide-and-seek, and she's, like, you know, warmer, warmer, and then, you know, she, she throws away his shotgun and tries to use his chainsaw hand to cut him. You know, this is it's it's this great mix that the Evil Dead franchise has always done, where it's like scary, but it's also kind of funny in a way because it is such an, an absurd scenario. You know, this is the kind of thing that you would never think to experience. As an adult, like as a child, yeah, obviously it's a formative experience for all of us. But you know, but the, the just fantastic, and and yeah, I continue to love when Ash is threatened with his own chainsaw, and yeah, he manages to to you know get her out in front of the house, and I do love the the ADR of like, why aren't we shooting him? <laughs> but yeah, you know, he the the. Um, Let's see, um, yeah, you know, she she makes her face normal, and she's like, oh, what's this heart? You know, throw that away. Do I have entrails on my face? I don't, I swear, officer, I do not know where that came from. You know, and, and yeah, you know, he's, she shows the, the dead-eyed face to him, and he shoots, not thinking about, wait, did they see that too, you know, and... I love the tension of, because, like, for a few seconds there, I seriously thought, Ash, you dumb motherfucker. You're going to make things worse. You're you're just proving the, that you are the serial killer that they think, you know, but... And, and the bit with, you know, any minute now, I, I swear this is going to be worth the wait, you know, but yeah, eventually she gets back up as, as a deadite, 
And, you know, also this thing of apparently they played hide-and-seek when they were kids, and she locked him in the trunk, so it really is just, like, the entire Williams family are just jerks. And, you know, yeah, he manages to get her inside the, the trunk, steps on top of it, you know, I think the idea was that he, like, jumps onto it, which... I do not blame Bruce Campbell for being like, can we can we just film me like landing then? And and yeah, you know, cuts her her head off with the chainsaw, and I love the not again. <laughs> I swear, this keeps happening to me. Was I born under uh you know I I shit, what's that saying? Born under an unlucky star or something, I swear, every time I come back to life as an unholy demon, I keep dying. It's it's a real drag. And, uh, let's see. Yeah, um, I continue to really love Joel Tobek as Ball. Just fantastic performance. I'm really going to miss Ted, Ted Ramia as Chet. And I think that might more or less cover... Right, and, and yeah, uh, IMDb Trivia, someone pointed out, uh, the number on Brock's house is 87, the year Evil Dead 2 was released. So yeah, definitely a an intentional reference there. And... Right, I, I like the ending. I'm really excited to see where that goes next and yeah I, I really appreciate I think it would have felt like a little annoying if they kept trying it out by the end of this episode they do have the spell that's going to take out ball right also yeah um, the thing of you know I have a plan I'm gonna shove this pet tracker down his throat no matter how many times he wears other people's skin, I'm going to be able to find him. I'm going to shove the chainsaw up his ass. And, you know, Ruby carefully explains, look, we're going to need the spell in order to actually stop him. And he's like, how about we combine our plans, though? Because I really want, I, I'm so glad I found this pet tracker. I really want to chainsaw his ass. You know, he's... Ever since his head up went up that butt, he's been a little anal retentive, you know. But yeah, um, I like that Pablo had some some um, consent while once his body is being taken over by the book. It's still like Pablo, you can do this, you know. And let's see. Yeah, I I think that was everything. So yeah, uh, sometime next week. I haven't decided yet, but sometime within the next the seven days that start tomorrow, I am gonna do another episode. So until then, I can be whoever you want me to be. Jesus Christ! Oh, the Son of God is a little bit of a stretch, but you take my point.